the next thing is housing I see. Can I now ask councillors to move paragraph 8? But before I do that, uh, could, I, could the council please note that I've allowed Councillor Thomas and Councillor Ellis up to 10 minutes if they so wish. Councillor Ellis. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, paragraph uh, 8 is for adoption uh, and there are speakers. Councillor Thomas. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Madam Mayor, members, it feels tonight as though uh, we're debating a paper that's a bit of an old museum relic. I don't know how many of you have read it, but it's essentially a dusted down version of the same paper that the party, party opposite me have been wheeling out for years and years. So I think we have to ask the question, apart from having the highest council rents in the country, where have these policies in fact got us? Now, as you know, uh, Labour is the party of fairness, so in the interests of fairness, let me start by acknowledging what I'm sure Councillor Ellis and his colleagues uh, will very shortly point out, uh, that unlike many other councils, uh, Wandsworth did retain its council stock. Uh, this was what, uh, what tenants wanted, and it was supported uh, by all, so all sides of uh, this council chamber. I think it would be a grave mistake uh, to infer from that uh, that everything about the council's record as a social landlord uh, is rosy. This council is far too complacent about its performance in this area. Because their housing is subsidised, the council spends its life lecturing its tenants about how lucky they are. The reality is that many tenants have to put up with living conditions that most of us would not accept for our own homes, whilst bearing the brunt of rents that have risen faster than in any other sector. Take, for example, the situation with regard to decent homes. This council is fond of boasting how it was one of the first in the country to achieve 100% compliance with the decent home standard. So far, so good, you might say. But let's look at how this was, in fact, achieved. The answer is by studying the small print of the standard and working out how to comply with the minimum amount of work possible. For example, while the standard says that facilities such as kitchens and bathrooms should be reasonably modern, uh, and reasonably modern is defined in the case of bathrooms as less than 30 years old, a property only actually fails the standard if it falls down against this criteria on three or more separate counts. For example, kitchen, bathroom, plus something else. While other councils uh, took the decent home standards as a cue to un undertake comprehensive programs of kitchen and bathroom replacement across uh, their stock, uh, in this council, therefore, that did not happen uh, because it was reckoned uh, that the small print uh, of uh, the standard didn't require it. The standard also states that if a property has key structural elements, such as windows that are old and in need of replacing, the decent home standard is not met. In Wandsworth, this leads to endless arguments with the council frequently maintaining that whilst components may be old, they are not in need of replacing because they still have serviceable life in them. I sometimes think that if our sock was slightly older, the party opposite would probably also be arguing that there was no need to install electricity in our council stock as the gas lights were still perfectly functional. <laughs> Quite rightly, the residents take a pretty dim view of this state of affairs. A case in point is a petition I presented earlier from residents in the Phelan's estate. Let me read it out in full. It says this, we the undersigned would like our outdated, faulty and inefficient metal windows to be replaced by the council with double glazed units as soon as possible. Now, this being my ward, I've seen uh, these windows many times myself and I can certainly say I wouldn't want them in my home and neither, I suspect, would many of the members opposite. Nor is the problem limited to council tenants. Leaseholders also find themselves between a rock and a hard place. Yes, they can replace their windows themselves, 